Hi kids, I'm barbecue enthusiast Chris Bathiger. And I'm Chef Aiden Galligan. This is Hogtown Barbecue. We profile Toronto's best smokehouses. Toronto's become a real hotbed for southern barbecue, and today we're at front of Greenwood Smokehouse, one of the hippest barbecue joints in the city, and the only one that has an R2-D2 out front, which is awesome. Let's go inside and showcase their signature dish. This is Hogtown Barbecue. It's got pigs on the walls, it smells like a pork-infused campfire, and no one cares if you don't use your cutlery. Greenwood Smokehouse is in the middle of Greek Town at Danforth, just east of Pate, but the menu is pure southern barbecue. Mm. The decor is campy and buttoned down, kind of like your grandfather's basement, complete with wall panels and license plates. It's a nice casual place to walk in. They always play great tunes. Service is fun and friendly. You can relax and always walk in after having a great meal. It's beer cold? Beer is always cold. Very warm. It's very welcoming. People are very excited. There's a fast pace going on because we're getting food out, you know, and the place is packed and people are lining up outside the door. Owner and pitmaster Warren D. Simone first tasted a rib sandwich on white bread in Las Vegas back in the 90s. And it somehow stirred his inner caveman. There's something primal about it. There's something about cooking with fire and smoke that really attracts people. The menu is southern, low and slow. South Carolina pulled pork, Memphis ribs, Texas brisket. There's a long beer list and all 40 seats are usually packed on Friday and Saturday nights. It's also kid friendly too. And despite its reputation for smoked meat, there are even a few vegetarian and vegan dishes. They do takeout and delivery, but Warren hopes you'll stay. It's my way of connecting with the community, uh, creating an institution where people could come, feel welcome, feel warm, get a good meal for a fair price, and go home. <laughs> so what we're doing is a pastrami beef short rib. Oh, that sounds amazing. What makes pastrami unique is uh, that, that uh, it's corned or, or cured before we smoke it. So the goal here is is to cure the meat so, so that we, we prevent things like uh, botulism. Botulism doesn't taste very good. No, it doesn't. It. Would you say Chris is wearing the correct garb for this? <laughs> I definitely recommend an apron for That's this okay. process. This is my eating vest, <laughs> so I'm fine. Okay, so uh, what are you gonna make this brine out of? All right, so what, what we, we got here is uh, we got a uh, kosher salt. Okay. That goes inside a gallon of water. We got a cup of uh, yellow sugar. Is yellow sugar different than brown sugar? Yeah, it just has a different molasses content than, than brown sugar. Cool. A little bit less molasses. Right. We're gonna put some uh, chopped garlic in there, about uh, four cloves. Cool. I thought those were almonds. I had one earlier and I thought they were <laughs> a little off. So what's in there? So we've got some uh, mustard seed, anise, juniper, bay leaves, peppercorns, chili flakes. Two teaspoons of pink salt. Uh, which has a nitrite. This is the most important part in the pickling process. Okay. This, uh, the nitrites uh, uh, kill all the botulism. Warren, where can I buy curing salt? Curing salts are readily available online. So we mix this up until everything's dissolved. Did you want to sure. finish that up for me? And then uh, next what we want to do is uh, we, we uh, take our beef short rib and uh, we pour our mixture on top of the beef short rib. If I'm looking for a short rib at, the, say, my local butcher, right. what do I need to ask for? You're going to want to ask him for a beef short rib chuck cut. And does it need to be clean? Does he need to take anything off um, of it? You can ask him to take some of the excess fat off. How many people will this feed, and, uh, and how big of a piece of meat would I be asking for? When you get a beef short rib, uh, it comes with four bones. And you, you generally want, you know, a bone will feed one adult. So what we're going to do next is we're just simply going to take the, uh, the brine mixture. And how long do you have to brine the short rib for? This will take about four days. We're going to put it in the fridge, put a cover on top of it, uh, let it do its thing, and after four days, we're going to pull it out, rinse it off, dry it, and then we're going to put our uh, dry rub on it. So this has been in the brine for four days, and now what do we do with it? All right, so now we're going to remove it from its brine. Get my trusty cutting board over here. Place that over there. That looks great already. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to rinse our, uh, our meat off uh, of all the pickling spices and brine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our dry rub. So I've got four ounces of yellow sugar that goes into the bowl, four ounces of coarse black pepper, four ounces of fine black pepper, four ounces of coriander, about an ounce of garlic powder, and about an ounce of onion powder. Again, we're going to apply our gloves, keep a sanitary environment. 
makes me think of the doctor every time you do that. <laughs> and we just want to mix this, gently mix this all together. Now, I noticed that um, you had a lot of other spices in there, but you didn't have any salt. Is there, what's the reason Well, you don't that? need to salt it because uh, you've already cured your meat in, in a salt brine. Right. So the meat's already salty, so it doesn't it. need any more salt in it. You're going to want to open that up. It's nice and it's got a tackiness to it, if you if you will. So that'll yep. help the uh, yep. the rub adhere to the to the meat. They call it a rub, but you don't actually rub it into the meat. You know, put your hand over, you know, a foot over the meat, and sort of like a, a sprinkler head. And then we also want to make sure we uh, season all the edges as well. We're going to let that sit for another uh, 10 to 15 minutes so that uh, the the meats can adhere to the to the spices, and uh, and then we'll put this in our smoker. All right, so we've let it sit for about 20 minutes. Now we're just going to throw it in the smoker. Awesome. Yeah. So I noticed that uh, you didn't rub the bottom of the, uh, the beef rib. Is there? Uh, do you need to do that? Um, no, the, the bones are all at the bottom of the of the rib, and you really just want the meat seasoned. Okay. So that's cool. why we only season the, the, the tops and the sides. All right. So now now that it's in, how long is it going to stay in the smoker? All right, it's going to stay in here for about seven to ten hours uh, at about 275 Fahrenheit. What if you just have like a regular gas grill at home? What, what would sure. you do to replicate this? Sure, you could do a, an offset method. So, so what you do is turn on one of your burners, but not the other burner, and keep the meat on the the, the side where the burner is not on. Okay, so the cold and side. The the cold side. Cool. And uh, and then you can get some wood chips in in a tin foil bag. Yep. And put that on on the hot side, and and, and put holes in the in the tin foil bag, and then. The, the, the smoke will come out of the, the tin foil bag and, and, and flavor it. Great, that's a great idea. Yeah. So after Woo. about uh, seven hours, you're going to want to do what's what we like to call a poke test. Yeah. So what we like to do is uh, I, I use my thermometer and then what I do is I, I poke the meat to see if the probe will go all the way through the meat without any uh, tension. The probe's going right through like it's butter. Wow. Oh wow, that's amazing. Next, while we, we let them steam, we're gonna have uh, Chef Garrett uh, make a mustard juice sauce for us. So I've got uh, some of our smoked beef drippings that I'm gonna throw into a pot. So I'm gonna turn that on. So I'm gonna add a little grainy Dijon mustard to it, probably about a cup. Just stir it up. And then I'm just gonna let that reduce by about half. Yep. And then I'm gonna add my seasoning. All right, here we go, guys. Dig in. Mm. I need to be alone. <laughs> I mean, we're clearly using cutlery right now, but uh, I mean, I could see myself just eating this with my hands. You ever have people do that? Oh yeah, all the time. Like, Absolutely. That's actually my preferred way. Yeah, <laughs> Warren's a little more sophisticated. He'll do the knife and fork, but I'm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm right in there with my hands. I'm not even talking to you guys anymore. <laughs> Enjoy. So you're wearing your eating pants right now? <laughs> yeah, they're ones I can throw in if I have to. I so. bet you can't fit that whole thing in your mouth in one shot. You're a Really? Clearly you hate it. Are you sure you need all those rips? You know, like, I, I mean, I could take one or two of those off your hands. If you, no, you sure? I'm sure. I don't I'm know, you sure. hesitated. I, feel I like have a hesitated. fork. I'm not afraid to use it. This is my mom. She yeah. came in for uh, for the weekend. From St. Louis. She ordered yes. the beans, and that's why my dad's no longer here. I was just wondering if we should eat eat the ribs with the fingers or fork? With their fingers, yeah. Yeah, that's how I would do it. <laughs> okay, so we serve a smoked mushroom veggie burger. If you check out Blog T.O., it's number one in Toronto. You're eating like you're in a hurry. Are you going somewhere? Uh, no, I just am... <laughs> Oh, I see. So you got to eat while you can. I've got to eat while I got it. I want everyone to feel comfortable and warm. I don't want people to think that they have to wear, you know, their Sunday best when they come here. Have you ever had the wash the barbecue sauce out of your hair oh, yeah. after coming? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How is it? I'm going home smelling like barbecue tonight. Awesome barbecue by Tom Ford. Just a reminder that Greenwood Smokehouse is located on Danforth Avenue, just east of Pape in the city of Toronto. Guess what? You just watched Hogtown Barbecue. I'm barbecue eater Chris Bethiger. I'm chef Aiden Galligan. See you next time. All right, here you go. This guy. That's it. Let's go inside and we'll show you barbecue. <laughs> Which is also a smoker, Chris. This is Hogtown Barbecue. <laughs> That is just sad.